Hey everyone. I missed you last week, didn't I? I'm so sorry. But I've got some good stuff for you. I've got a few things I'm going to film now and, you know, they'll be all coming out soon. Why did I miss you last week? I was on a job. Uh, I think I might have said in some videos I've got, got to go back east. Well, yeah, we've got some clients in the city. And not every job I do is a break-in job, right? Sometimes it's just regular kind of boring consultation. It's site visits. It's site surveys. It's walking around with the client when everyone in the office knows you're going to be there. Does that mean all I do is go in with a little, you know, attache binder or a notepad or a camera? No. I do have tools on me, but they're not what I'll call a field kit. This, today's video is about this right here. This is a really awesome, you know, kind of paper attache organizer. So I was given this by the cadets at West Point uh, where they have, you know, invited me to speak over the years. And it comes with me when I'm doing some just site survey consultations. And I wanted to share it with you because while there's a billion videos out there from all walks of life, whether you're into locks or guns or cooking or driving or anything else about all the stuff you need and here's a long list of stuff you gotta get, ah, the top 25 things and here's my Amazon affiliate links, ah, have you tried Blue Apron? But there's not a lot of videos and there really should be more of them in many technical walks of life about stuff you don't need. This video, I'm gonna show you what I've got here but it's mostly gonna be a video talking about shit you don't need when you're on a site survey consultation style visit. So let's just start off with what I do have. We can get that out of the way and talk about dumb shit you shouldn't waste your money on. On site, what are you doing if you're walking around, taking a few photos, showing the client a couple things? Hey, this is a risk here. Hey, you should be mindful of that. You're demonstrating impact. And the best way to do that is with bypass tools, hands, hands down. You can see actually right here in these two spots, traveler hook and mini knife. My traveler hook and my mini knife and the little you know chopped down door shims right here, these are the kind of things you're going to see in a lot of this gear. This is the stuff that allows me to quickly show, oh, so here, this is a kind of a problem here. Do you mind if we, can we, can we try a thing? This, this door is not a good strike plate. You don't want, here, let me just, let me show you here, watch. Hey, that door's open. Yeah, you wanna try it? Okay, let's keep moving on. Those kind of conversations. This is, it's limited quick hits where sometimes you're shooting a highlight reel that you're going to give at sort of an executive briefing or sometimes you just kind of have to convince a few people where all you have is 30 seconds. You don't have time to get them to read a full write-up. And oh, well, you've got this super million dollar whammo dine equipment. Well, they're not gonna, you know, we don't have that kind of threat actor. You say, no, look, I got this little thing right here and you got this key box and I can decode one and two and uh, three. Okay, there we go, look at that. Are these the keys to that executive office? Yeah, don't keep them in this key box. These are the kind of things that you want. Let's talk about some other bypass tools. This is, this is my kit right here. This is really kind of it. Got ourselves our little tool organizer here. Let's dig into it. Mini gym or rescue gym, kind of just, again, latch slipping kind of affairs of that nature. Nothing majorly crazy going on. If you wanna reach in and kind of, okay, let me kind of pop this open. Why do I not use this when I typically would wanna slip a door? I'm usually gonna reach for plastic shims. Something we're gonna talk about on a lot of consultation jobs is damage free. And I don't just mean destructive attacks. I mean, leaving scratches and marks and scuffs Little things you should not be doing if you are with certain executives and they're already a little little iffy. These are walking around techniques where you're trying to convince people that you know what you're talking about. All right, we've got another mini knife. We've got a bypass knife. Again, are these going to leave no forensic evidence? No, they'll leave forensic evidence, but it's inside the lock. So you're, you know, here's a filing cabinet and you can bang, just kind of scratch that open. Not gonna damage the outside. Adams Wright and American Lock bypass tools. The trip wires, the bypass drivers, the Sparrows drivers, the American Lock drivers for the Peterson ones, you name it. But if you have any of Peterson's, what they uh, call the Dame kit, the defense against methods of entry, which isn't a defense, they're methods of entry tools. I don't know why, but yeah, definitely carry your Peterson Dame set, carry your, you know, your sort of your little shove tool, your, your mini bar. Here's one, right? Popping those hinge pins. Do I expect you to take a door off the frame when you're on a site visit? No, I do not expect that. I don't advise that either. 
But again, it's a real wow of a t look. Look at this thing. Uh, it's the size of a pen, and then you just you knock one hinge pin out, and you, people are like, "Oh my God, that's our hinge pins are not captive." And you're like, "Yeah, I told you they're not captive. Look, I, you, I just showed you." What else do we have in here? I do always carry my Hooligan key set. Uh, we've talked about common keys, right? So if you get these either at Hooligan Keys or you get these on eBay or wherever you want to go, but that's that's my you know all of my typical quick use keys because again. It's not that I need these keys to operate every lock I come across. If I want to get into your access control panel, I'll be able to do it pretty quickly. If I want to get into your filing cabinet, I'll be able to do it pretty quickly. But being able to show the client, hey, I'm not using picks, right? This is the key to your server rack. It's on eBay, it's on Amazon, anyone can buy it. That's a real wow moment for them because people don't realize how common those keys are. And my comb picks, my jiggler tools, they're, they're just also on my little key smart in there, right there. So again, comb picking, wafer lock jiggling, these are simple, dead ass simple concepts. And it just, it's, they're simple enough that you can be with a client and be like, did you see that? Do you want, do you want to try it here? And it's going to work for them. That's how you're selling them the idea of demonstrated impact and oh, wow, we have to think about this. Couple more things down this side. What do we have in this zipper pouch here? You might see something, something's green. What's going on here? This, this is a fun one for me. Have you seen me talk about this stuff in some of my talks before? One of the things you don't see here is canned air. One of the best bypasses, right? Getting those rec sensors, opening doors. Why is it not here? Because I'm getting on a plane every time I'm going to a client. You can't fly with compressed gas. You can always buy it in any city, right? You walk into Staples, Best Buy, Office Max, whatever. You can buy canned air. Canned air sometimes comes with the dumbest, stubbiest, shortest, most useless straws ever. So that's what this is. This is replacement or extendo straw. You can stretch this out, feed it through a door, under a door, steer it around, and blow canned air halfway down the hallway. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really good stuff to have around. I know it gets a little kinked in my bag. Give it a little, good little what for with a hair dryer or somebody's cigarette lighter. You can stretch it back out. Be just fine. We're starting to proceed down into the maybe section. I mentioned how using the very non-destructive sort of slipping attacks, I mean, that's my go-to, right? And I even was kind of hesitant on things like the, uh, the mini gym or the rescue gym. The same thing applies to something like bumping. I don't actually have my bump keys on me. I didn't throw them in on this job. Uh, we, we knew the, the locks at the client site due to some recon. But I didn't want to, you know, normally I would have a Schlage super bump, a quick set super bump. They're all coming back in stock, by the way. And, you know, I have some of those, those bump softening rings. If you're going to do any bumping, especially on a walkthrough, you want to have those bump bands because you don't want to cause any front face plate damage. Likewise, padlock shims. Be really careful if you think you're going to slip a shim into any kind of lock. I know, just as a junky padlock on the thing, but if it scrapes up the lock, if it's got a nice you know, anodized aluminum finish, and now you put a big gash in it. Corporate America can be twitchy about how things look. I always like to use aluminum, not the steel ones, right? So I have a little set of travel folding scissors. We've talked about these before. I mean, they're gonna be TSA legal. There's no real problems there. And I have some soda can metal. I have a little bit here, but you can always score soda can metal. If you want to try to make a shim to slip into something, maybe you do it that way. But again, be, be careful of what you might damage. I've got my other double-sided jigglers in this side. One thing you're not seeing me mention is a pick kit. Why? Well, you're like, oh my God, you, that's like should be the first thing you talked about. No, you don't need picks most of the time. You're starting to get into specialized territory where people are like, hmm, I don't know. Would a criminal really bring lock picks? And like, of course they would, but and you all should have your own lockpick sets. You probably have them in your pocket or in your laptop bag, right? You don't need an extra set here. I have this little jackknife set that uh, was, I guess this was on Kickstarter. And I'm just, I kind of wanted to throw it in in case I wanted to manipulate a, you know, a storage cabinet or something. But honest to God, I've never, ever used this on a walkthrough consultation. I don't want to look that kind of specialized or flashy. Electronics, electronics also, we're starting to get into the questions of what about access control? Everything's becoming modern. Do you have your Proxmark? Where's your Proxmark, Dave? No, you know why I don't have the Proxmark in this kit? Because the Proxmark's useless to me without a laptop. I mean, well, I mean, not entirely. I have the Blue Shark, so I could use it with my phone. 
But for the most part, my Proxmarks live in my laptop kit. All my electronic stuff lives in my laptop kit. The one electronic thing I have is the search pole. And why? Well, if you haven't seen the search pole, right, this is a magnetic field detector. It'll point in the direction of magnets. We use this along door frames, right, checking to see where door sensors are. And if you come across a door sensor having a little white and black bits of tape, little round tapes that you can slap a magnet on that door sensor to mask it out. We talk about this in training classes. Is that something that is just a super stealth attack? No, it's a wow moment for executives who you're touring around with them. And they go, wow, you, wait, so if you just walk through that door, sometimes I'll do it without telling them. We'll walk through a door and I'll see, I will have checked where the, where the sensor, I'm like, oh, the sensor's right down by the strike, that's rare. And we'll, oh, look, can you take me through this way? And I'll just kind of stick a thing on there. And as we're, I say, now, this door, this, this door is alarmed. Do you have to badge to get out? What happens if you don't badge? Oh, well, the alarm goes off here. And I open the door. And they, what happened? How'd you do that? It should be an alarm. And I said, well, no. And I rip off the magnet, and then the alarm starts squealing. I'm like, yeah, so this is a magnet. Uh, I just masked the magnet as I was walking by, and it's a little, it's a piece of tape. They're wow moments that deliver impact and let people really understand what's going on. Only a couple more items that I have in here. A couple of measuring tools you might have seen peeking out, right? I've got a devious decoder card. If I want to demonstrate the idea of how quickly you can copy a key, it's, it's an easy thing. You can give that to someone. They understand what's happening much more than they would understand calipers or having to look up things like that. Uh, I do have a small straight edge. It's an evidence ruler. If I need to take photos uh, in situ of anything, you should always have an evidence ruler if you're just doing certain kinds of forensic work as well. But that's just about it. Really, the last thing in here is some tiny hand tools. Uh, I don't bring my big ass bit set, right? I don't bring a whole smasher of equipment because that's not what this is about. You, if you really need a screwdriver or a hammer or something, like if something's damaged, you say, hey, can we try, you know, the client wants me to try to crack this safe open, which who the hell is doing that? If the client wants that, the client can go find you a hammer the client can find you a big screwdriver from a janitor or something. Tiny stuff like this, which, oh my God, can we just all appreciate the little Vera bit holder? Uh, I'll link some of this down below if you want to dig on it. Like, you know, it's none of this is sponsored stuff. But yeah, a small assortment of bits, uh, including the little spanner number six, so I can get card readers off the wall. If I want to demonstrate to people, hey, yeah, your, your card reader is not like securely installed. It's, it's not a particularly tamper-resistant fastener. But that's about it in my main set here. There's one other thing that you might have noticed I skipped past. And you say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought you said keeping it simple, Dave. What, what are you doing here? Yes, I do have a pair of Lishi two-in-one tools. And they're the only two you meaningfully ever need. So you don't have to stock up from here to the moon. You get your SC20 and your KW5, right? Schlage and Quickset. And even the Quickset's pushing it in terms of Realism. Are you going to encounter Quickset in corporate America? Not that often. But if you do, you definitely don't need the, the KW1 and the KW5. No, we've got our little standoff spacers. You know this. Anybody who buys uh, leashes from us on Red Team Tools, which I think we're still the lowest price out there, uh, they all come for free with the standoff adapter. The Schlage one, this is not something I'll reach for often. This is only if I think I have the right audience and I tell them, I'm like, hey, so you know, you're not using a restricted keyway. Uh, I, I mean, you're using Schlage F, it's not super common, but anybody could get keys for that, anybody could decode that, you can manipulate it. And if they say anything like, what, well, decode, decode the lock, yeah, I mean, you can take, I don't want to take the lock apart, but I can, I actually have a tool, you might have heard of this, and they say, oh, I've heard, and then I can kind of do a little demo. I don't reach for them for the most part, but having them around, if you've got the budget for it, that just about rounds it out. And then in the case itself, I mean, I do have a little clipboard, super low profile, so I can close it up, but I can walk around, I can take notes, I can grab, oh, the client has a blueprint or something, I can work on something. Uh, I have a couple of my GSA inspection you know, templates here, because this is what I bring on military bases. This is what I bring to GSA safe servicing. When I do a safe survey and I want to just inspect the thing, I can unscrew a little you know, panel if something, like, why do you have this on here? This, these holes shouldn't be here. Now i got to write you up for that. But I'm just going to do, again, it's a quick inspection survey. I have a tiny shoulder strap in here that I can clip on and sling this like a messenger bag. But that's just about the size of it. You don't need more than a couple pens and paper 
and a few small bypass tools to do a really good job on site with something that fits in a single portfolio. Now, are there a couple things that are really crazy useful, but simply too big to fit in here? Yeah. What's the number one? You, everyone's thinking about it right now. It's the underdoor tool. Absolutely. We've got a lot of friends who are pioneering different ways to collapse underdoor tools, make them smaller. Yeah, you can coil them up. You, <laughs> if you're really adventurous, you might try to muscle one down and to fit it in here. I wouldn't want to be around it when you unzip this and it blows everywhere. But yeah, having an underdoor tool, it's great. It's really great on certain site surveys if you can manage it. Uh, it's not going in a kit like this. That's just the reality of life. I mentioned the canned air, right? Same thing. They either have it at the office or you buy it at a local supply like in town and you, you, know, you just bring it if you want to demo that. Other things that are really nice to have but a little bit big for this. Uh, keys to Silicon Valley for those big glass double door tools, the sort of frameless glass doors. You, you might get one in here. I have one in my laptop bag, frankly. But again, you're getting a little large. Uh, magnets, big magnets, not the little dot magnets. Big mag switches. We just used them on this job that I just came back from and it was just smoked people's brains because we were on the outside of a door. We literally were able to disable and mask door contact sensors, door position switches with one of our big mag switch 1000s from the outside of the door. And the door frame, as you can see, is white. So what did we do? Well, we covered that up with masking tape. We're going to have something new for you that's going to eliminate that concern, by the way. We're going to give you a little shoe that snaps over every one of the mag switches we sell in the near future. So you don't have to worry about scraping up somebody's paint. But yeah, and again, we're not going to put a mag switch in here. Uh, J tool, like a thumb turn tool, you could jam it in here. It's an edge case. It's too big. Uh, the rip cord on garage doors. If you're doing a residential executive, you know, analysis, like maybe you have a rip cord in your car. You don't need that with you all the time. If you're doing hotels or something like lodging on the road, yeah, there's the lock jockey to get those night locks. You don't need that in here. They're just they're too big, and you can get them later if you need them. All right. Now we've talked about everything you do need, might need, could need. Let's talk about shit you don't need. Do not, do not overfill your pockets and your coat and your pants and everything else. And then you can't even, you just, you, you look like Mr. Disaster Doom with like all your kit. Uh, what do you, you don't look professional. Number one is tools for obscure locks. Tubular tools, leave them at home. Cross picks, leave them at home. Dimple tools, leave them at home. Region dependent, right? If you are in a certain region of the world where just everyone's got cross locks and you want to bring your little cross pick, maybe sure. But I didn't even bring conventional lock picks that were that great. You're not manipulating, you're bypassing. You are not making keys on site at the client. You can demonstrate, look, I can decode your keys or I could maybe decode your lock. You're not making copies of keys. Don't bring a pack-a-punch. Don't bring a, an impressioning file. You're not impressioning. It takes too long. It's too boring. Puts too much strain on the lock. You don't need a crap ton of blanks. You're not disassembling locks using rear shimming with blanks. Don't le leave all that shit in your field bag. Likewise, you're not disassembling locks, I said. So that also means you don't need tweezers. You don't need a pinning tray. You don't need spare pinning parts. You don't need follower tools. Yes, even the super fancy, easy loader. That all belongs in your field case for covert entry work that doesn't belong at a boardroom table. You're not taking a lock apart at a boardroom table. That's YouTube hacker shit. And do I have to say lighting things on fire? in the client space, not the best thing if you're dealing with suits. I love mold and cast attacks, melting metal and making copies of keys. No, just stop it. Just stop it. That's cool stuff. It is an edge case. You don't need it in an executive briefing kind of kit. We talked about causing damage. Damage is a no-no. That means even incidental damage. So anything like American lock wafer breakers, uh, pry bar tools, anything like a, I've seen people with like, uh, they, had a, they had a nut splitter with a big, you know, Saskatchewan nut round or crescent wrench in there too. Like, like what are you using a nut splitter to destroy like a shackle or something? Like, no, no, that again, that goes in your field gear supplies. Anything that could bend or even just scrape stuff up badly in the door frame, you got to be really careful about that, depending on the client and how you're interacting with them. A lot of us have stuff we love, but it's just too big and you're never going to need it. Trust me, 
I've been doing this a long time. You're not going to need your calipers. You're not going to need magnification tools. You're not going to need something like the, the canister of film, the over-the-door attack. It's a neat edge case attack. This, it's a big cat. You can't crimp the film up tiny or it damages it. I don't have room for that crap. If you've got space in a laptop bag where you're already taking the canned air, maybe you put the film canister underneath it in some drinks pouch. Uh, I guess you could do that. But again, it should stay away from big junk like that. Plug spinner, snapper guns, a wheel bar, right? Somebody once said, hey, I was going to use your, your door hinge tool on the job, on a consult consultation, so I got to get the wheel bar. They were ordering it from me, and I was like, what are you doing? Show the person, yeah, look, I can snap one of your hinge pins out. Don't take the door off the hinges, man. Like, you've already won. You don't need a wheel bar right now. I mentioned the little tiny bit handy tool and, and a small set of bits organized like this. Uh, if you're curious what I keep, by the way, so I keep some Phillips. I mean, everything is Phillips number two, or occasionally you'll get like a number one or a real shitty piece of electronics that's like a zero and a half. Uh, I have a couple of Torx bits in here, security Torx. The most, com in my experience, the most common is going to be like a T25, maybe a T15 or a T20 if you want to go really small. If that's, that's if you're taking apart electronics though. Uh, T25 and T30, if you're demonstrating, hey, look, I can, I can take this cabinet apart. Uh, one or two straight slots, and then you've got your, you know, you got your little spanner bit there. This is fine. Bigger, bulkier hand tools. As I said, though, you need a big screwdriver to solve a big problem. That's an edge case with the client. You're like, hey, this is a big ass thing. Do you really want us to try this? We could, let's go find a screwdriver. Let, ask somebody in plant ops. You don't need big hand tools. You don't need a big Gerber multi-tool. You don't need pliers. You don't need any of that crap. If you desperately need it because you saw something when you walked around once, you'd be like, hey, after lunch, I'm gonna show you something. You go to a hardware store. You go to any you know, drug store even has a little aisle with some small like six-way screwdriver and bullshit if you think you need it. So a big pump up air wedge, you can spread the door frame out. No, you don't need that. You don't need to be prying on things. You don't need giant specialized key sets, right? My big bulky elevator key sets, I've got a ton of elevator keys. They're not in here. If I see an elevator on the client's site, I can, I can identify it. I can walk there and be like, hey, you know, you have Montgomery Kone elevators. They're probably default keyed. Would you like that tested? I mean, I can, I can bring, bring a key back tomorrow when I come back to do the wrap up, or I can mail you a key. Like I can just send the client a key and be like, here, check it out that we told you that thing. Does it work? <laughs> totally told you it work. Just mail it back to us. You don't need to have everything on you all the time. The, the UV powder kits, some of you have been going nuts buying our UV powder dusting kits for keypads, right? Really cool thing to use. You don't need it on a job, especially if you're walking around during the daytime, they work a lot better at night. And lastly, what am I carrying all these tools in again? I'm carrying them in just a very, I mean, I'll link it below, right? It's one of those typical cable accessory organizers that everyone keeps in their laptop bag. This fits in here clean and it looks normal in a corporate environment. You know what I'm not carrying all those tools in? Some sort of tactical high speed, you know, bro molly kit. We all love Condor and how they've knocked off everyone's designs and they make a really cheap admin pouch that's rugged and looks awesome, but you don't need that. You don't need all this molly and everything else. This looks weird in a corporate environment. This looks weird coming through at the x-ray and you're going through the front, oh yeah, I'm here with an appointment. This looks strange. You're gonna get weird looks. This is clean. This is professional. This looks like a person who is just there to have a meeting and answer the questions they've got. If you can do more with less, you will look better and you will spend your money more wisely. This video, I, I told you, it's, I, I mentioned a few things I like and a lot of it, I'll, I'll link it down yonder, right? But it's mostly shit you don't need. So please, please do more with less. Work under constrained circumstances. Try to get your kit down even tighter than I have here. In the comments, tell me things that you think are dumb that you're like, wow, I used to carry that all the time. I never would. Save your money, everybody. I will thumbs up that shit. I'll pin the best one if somebody can tell me something that's incredibly stupid that I have in this kit. All right? I would love to, like, we'll do a giveaway of something. Let's, what, what do we got in here? Um, yeah, let's start you out on, what's something that a lot of you should have and many times you don't, you don't take with you someplace? You know what? How many of you actually have an evidence ruler? It's a silly thing to say, but you just, you look way more professional when you, when you kind of break it out. Yeah. 
We'll do, we'll do an evidence ruler and I'll even throw one of the American lock bypass drivers in there because if you don't have a bypass driver from Peterson, I'll give you one of the Peterson ones, right? It's, it's one of those things that it's, of all the different Dame kit gear, the bypass driver is a real, whoo, wow, I can't believe you just popped that right open. Uh, yeah, so you know how this works, right? The contest URL, you sign up once, you're good forever, and I will do a drawing, and I will let somebody know that they've got a sort of a very blue team and a very red team style of thin sliver stuff that you can slip right down inside of any tiny pouch that you have inside of any attache case. So I wish you well, I wish you to spend your money wisely, and I wish all of you that you and yourselves and all your clients uh, stay safe out there.